Hey what's up everybody, TrophyNet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. As I told you guys before, I like to tinker with fun deck ideas. And we're going to talk about one such idea today. The Deadbugs deck. The Deadbugs deck is led by the Arakas Queen. The main focus of the deck is controlled destruction. The Arakas Queen spawns a 1 power Arakas drone every time one of your units is destroyed during your turn. This deck gives you a lot of options to set up different self-sustaining loops using the spiders as their fuel. As always, you can check out the deck composition here in the video and in the description. I spent a while trying to find the best combination of cards uh, to get the most out of the Queen. It's not unstoppable, no Gwent deck ever is, but it's a very satisfying deck to use once it gets going. The Arakas Queen basically allows you to consume or destroy units without losing on points too much. Every consume adds a point to your side because you get a 1 power Arakas drone in return without any other cards that need to be set up. The other key principle that this deck is based around is mass damage. Spreading damage out to all units on the field by the end of the round to capitalize on your full board. To get this deck going however, you need two things. One, multiple victim units and two, ways to consume or destroy those units. That's how this deck is going to be set up. Because of these basic principles, a lot of the cards in this deck are optional, but let's go over the more interesting cards and how they work in this deck. Let's start with the basics, the sacrificial units. The first turns are usually spent adding multiple units to your board, more quantity over quality. Neckers and Arcaspores are good starters that also limit the risks of quickly losing your more powerful units. To further our insectoid team, the Arakas Behemoth is perfect to generate a lot of units quickly. Combine that with Arakas Nests and you can fill up your board in only a few turns. Our most powerful victim monster however is Ruin. This guy resurrects at the end of your turn if he's destroyed. This means that he generates 4 points every time he is consumed on top of any other bonuses we might have set up. We can even copy him twice if we want to, but more on that in a minute. Once you have your victims ready, we can start consuming. Slizzards are perfect for this, able to consume a unit on their row every turn, keeping the cycle going without much help. Barbagazis, hey look, more bugs, can also consume twice on command. Our biggest bug of the deck is also the most useful in this regard. The K-Run is able to immediately consume up to 3 targets, which allows you to quickly capitalize on your consume rate. Remember, because of the Queen, every consume gives you an extra point. So more consumes means more points. Simple. The Cyclops is handy to both destroy a unit and use that power to deal damage to your enemy. This can offset the lack of damage potential this deck sometimes has. Our final destroyer is Keltulus, a giant dragon. This guy destroys the lowest unit on the side with the most units at the end of each of your turns. In our case that is either one of our drones or one of our opponent's units. It's just a simple win-win. Keltulis can single-handedly keep a loop going without you even needing to lay down any more cards. Just make sure you don't use Keltulis when there are no other units on the field. Because uh, you will learn the hard way that he will destroy himself once your turn is over. Having that extra point each time you destroy something is of course not enough to support a full deck. We can actually get a lot more out of this. There are two specific cards that actually benefit from the self-destruction we employ. Vran Warriors deal 1 damage to a random enemy every time you destroy a unit during your turn. That includes enemy units. His 3 power makes him pretty vulnerable though, so be careful in using him. Our other lover of death is the She-Troll of Vergen. She boosts herself by 2 every time one of your units is killed during your turn. This means that every consume could potentially generate 5 points. One for the drone, two for the she troll, and one for each of the two friend warriors you could potentially have. This can create some very powerful loops without relying too much on a single unit. And we're not done yet. Our final cornerstone is mass damage. This works great because any units we destroy could generate massive bonuses on top of the damage. With this in mind we add some obvious candidates. 
Four Tails deal 1 damage to all other units when played. This destroys all of your drones, giving you a massive amount of points if you set up a generator like the Sheet Roll or Vran Warrior. Because of the Arca's Queen, you also get all of your drones back, so every unit you destroy this way, on your side of the field that is, you get back as an Arakas drone, ready to be sacrificed again. To add to this we also use Yennefer, depending on your setup she can either damage all your other units by 2 or boost all of them by the same amount. So if you don't have any generators in place it's sometimes better to just boost all other units by 2 because you still get the advantage that way because usually you have way more units than your opponent with this deck. Our last game ender is the dreaded Glusty Warp. It's our final giant bug, I, I swear. The Glusty Warp consumes all one power units on the field, including any of your opponent and boosts itself by two for each, so doubling the normal consume gain you would normally get. Normally this would mean on the whole that you gain points equal to the amount consumed unless you consume enemy units, which would net you about three points each. But with the Queen, you gain double, because you get your drones back. On top of that, you also potentially get even more points if you also have a generator in play. The Glusty Warp is tough to play right, but can instantly turn the tide of any battle, easily netting you 20 to 30 points in total, or even way more. Seems bugs are really even more scary than we thought, aren't they? Our remaining cards are optional, but complement the deck nicely. Ache of the Nell is added to provide a counter against heavy units, which this deck lacks otherwise. And if you have Keltulis in your hand, he can kill an enemy with a power of 8 or higher immediately. If you don't, you'll have to wait a turn and risk losing him of course. The Whispering Hillock is immensely versatile, allowing you to replay any card by destroying it and playing a copy of it. So it spawns an Arrakis drone too. And remember Ruin? Our creepy demon. Using the Hillock, you can actually duplicate him. The original one will resurrect after your turn ends, while the copy you've created also lives on. Remember I said we could actually copy him twice? Well that's where our next card comes in, Garantir Arfeniel. This wild hunt sorcerer spawns a one power copy of any unit from your hand so you can choose that. You can use him to create an extra Ruin, bringing the possible total to 3. This can generate up to 12 points each turn if you manage to consume them all in your turn. Garanti can also be used to duplicate Kaeron or Keltulis. Just remember he spawns the copy instead of playing it, so you can't duplicate the ploy abilities like you can with the Hillock. So you can't replay for example the Arcas Behemoth to spawn more drones, because that just won't trigger. And that's it! I also added some supporting cards and you might see some slight variations on the deck in the gameplay uh, running on this video, but the basic principles are the same. Set up a lot of smaller units, knock them down over and over and finish up with massive board damage. To finish up, I quickly want to talk about the weaknesses of this deck. Everything in Gwent can be countered and this deck is no exception. This deck can mainly be countered by decks that can do a lot of one damage attacks like Northern Realms, uh, Skellige Crack decks, so the Croc on Crate decks, or any decks that use the Mastercrafted Spear because they can take out your drones. When this happens you can still play around this by using Ruin, and some of the more direct attacks in the deck, like the Cyclops, or even by just, if you're working against the Mastercrafted Spear, taking it out with uh, an Artifact Destroyer, which is not in this deck, but you can easily add Nitrol and a Bomb Heaver, for example. The other major counter is the Usurper Nilfgaard leader, since he disables your own leader, cutting you off from your Arakas drone supply, sadly. Uh, it's a very hard counter, so there's not much you can do about that, because it basically removes the use of our massive damage dealers as well, since you won't get your drones back when you get uh, destroyed, when you get destroyed units when using it. But you can again use a more direct approach to deal with this using ruin or direct attacks with the cyclops and stuff like that. To conclude, the Dead Bugs deck is powerful, but most importantly, a joy to play around with. It might not win you every match, but at least it's not as boring as those silly usurper decks that drain the fun out of your tactics. What do you guys think about this deck? Any suggestions to improve upon it? Please leave a comment down below and we can chat about it there. So thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!